All right, so I'm ready to go. So recipe renovations, let's jump into healthier swaths for healthier eating. Today's agenda, where we're going to be going over benefits of eating healthy, recipes 101, healthy swaps, recipe renovations, dining out hacks. And certainly I will fill in some anecdotal stories or different things I suggest to my clients when they are managing eating healthier and looking at recipes or finding healthy, more enjoyable ways to eat and be productive. So obviously, what are the benefits of eating healthy? You feel better, you look better, you're more productive, you can manage stress, you can manage the everyday interactions of what life is going to look like for you and how you're dealing with the inputs, the external inputs from the outside world that come to who you are. So benefits of healthy eating, opting for a balanced, adequate, varied diet is an important step towards a happy, healthier you. It helps boost your immunity. So we're going into, now it's October, we're going into the winter season, the fall winter season. Sickness is going to be on the rise. Don't get caught getting sick because you're just not eating good, healthy foods, lots of variety of colors and minerals. Protect your body from those diseases that aren't like the runny nose, say obesity, heart disease, diabetes. I actually picked up two clients in the last week that are dealing with type 2 diabetes. And how can I help them manage their health, their nutrition to get their A1Cs down, manage their blood sugar levels a lot more consistent. And uh, within two days, the so one lady's average blood sugars are down 50 points. So we're already on progress of just getting her more organized around proteins, vegetables, some fruit, and some healthy starchy carbs. We don't want cardiovascular disease. You don't want to deal with shots from being a diabetic or managing insulin levels. It's a lot of work. So if you just pay attention to eating healthier foods now, you'll not have to worry about that so much. So I mean, genetics can play a, uh, even maintaining healthy body weight genetics can play a role in disease of course for humans something's going to get us unfortunately on the end and hopefully it doesn't it's not something that you could have prevented with just eating healthier emotional health is way up your mental health is way up you have clarity in your thoughts in your ideas and how you react to the stresses of the world that you know we're human you're, you're constantly receiving inputs. It's important to manage that. So what does poor nutrition ultimately mean here for our body? Well, we went over some of those. Obesity, chronic disease, high blood pressure, especially the lower number, the diastolic number, systolic, diastolic, diastolic. When that's above 90, that's a sure indication of poor health. The higher number has a little bit more range to, say, 140, 150, 160 before the alarm bells really start going off, but that lower number, when your heart's at rest, we want low pressure. If that number's up, then we're not doing very well. Uh, diabetes type 1, type 2. Um, if you have type 1 diabetic, that means it's an insulin issue in your body. That in and of itself is something you obviously can't control, but you can control what food you eat to manage your blood sugar levels. My type 1 diabetics I work with, oftentimes we see way less units of insulin, a lot more blood sugar level stability, which gives them more productive energy in their day and not have to worry about, you know, is, is my blood sugar going to run low and I'm going to have to have some sugar or juice or something to get it back up. That's not ideal. High cholesterol numbers for the body or for our mind. So those are for the body. For our mind, we're looking at depression, anxiety, stress, and how your body handles that, lack of focus, brain fog, fatigue. These come in to play, especially around that one, two, three o'clock in the day. If you haven't been doing well on getting good nutrition earlier on, you're focused on, say, hitting the coffee and caffeine a bit more and stimulate yourself that way, then you are unplanned around what you're going to eat for lunch, making not the best decision there. Two, three o'clock could be a pretty rough time for you every single day. And it's self-induced, which is not good. So I always tell clients, let's pack food and eat what you pack. So you've already made that decision. That's one less decision in your day that you have to make about what am I going to eat and not get lost in 
you know, office snacks or someone's going to DoorDash or everyone's going out or someone brought food in. These are things, certainly occasionally you can participate in those, not all the time. It's not helpful for your life. So let's hit up the Q&A or chat box, whichever one's open. How do you feel when you eat healthy? So I'd love to see some some anecdotal things here of what def, what your feelings are when you're on point with healthier foods. Uh, what benefits of eating healthy do you notice the most? So someone someone get it started. Someone in the chat. You can do it to everyone or just to me. That works just fine. All right, we got one in already. Great. So how do you feel when you eat healthy? Uh, optimistic. <laughs> uh, another one is saying that they have energy more consistently throughout the day. They don't have that sluggish feeling that I was just referencing a little bit ago. That's great. Um, just feeling better. Excellent. Uh, more open to being active. Happier. Yep, these are all excellent. Thank you so much for jumping in. Participation makes it enjoyable for both of us. <laughs> Benefits of eating healthy, do you notice the, the most? Um, so with this, it could be something like being able to go on an afternoon walk after I get off of work because I have, have energy throughout the day and I'm not letting the day stressors get me all wrapped up. Um, this is Earl. Earl, we just started working together about two weeks ago. Unfortunately, he's overweight by more than he'd like to be. And we found that his poor habits before we started working together were leading to him being a little hangry when he got home from his day of work and taking out on his wife. Not exciting, not ideal, not a good place. Hey, great, let's have your wife get a little more upset with you the second you step into home because... You're mad at something somebody did or whatnot at work. So by structuring his food a little bit more organized, have packing his lunch so he manages a, a construction job site. He's the bottleneck. He's the point person on that. Everyone's looking to him for input and feedback and direction. It can be very chaotic. We don't want food to get lost in the chaos of him just not eating and all of a sudden he's going home and, and hangry in a sense. So... Um, that's something that we've noticed with him. He goes home, he actually has a smile on his face and his wife has even commented, Hey, you feel, you seem a lot nicer <laughs> when I see you initially, which is wonderful. All right. Thanks for those inputs. We'll keep those rolling here. So let's talk about recipe 101. What's a recipe and how is it broken down? And what do you do to help figure out what is going to be a better option for you versus not? So the first one, do have leaner proteins, certainly poultry, chicken, fish, to, or excuse me, chicken, turkey, then fish are lean protein sources. That's why everyone always eats them, especially if they're managing their weight. They're lower in calories, higher in protein, fill you up a lot more and balance out your blood sugar levels. And they literally just take longer to digest. So it works in your favor to not be uh, hungry after you, you know, an hour or two after you eat something that's say a bit more carb heavy. Obviously, we want to reduce higher cuts of fat. Literally, in one of the examples I share, 80% 80 percent uh, lean ground meat for four ounces has just about 300 calories. 96% of lean ground meat, whether it's beef or turkey or chicken or any of the other ones it's just 96 is how lean it is that has about 140 to 150 calories in it for a four ounce serving so do the math 80 ounce 80 percent for four ounces about 300 calories the 96 is half the calories and about a fifth of the fat so you get way more protein. You can literally eat eight ounces of the leaner meat for the same calories as four ounces of the fattier one. And then you're doubling your protein intake for that meal, which is excellent. All right, so low-fat, fat-free, dairy, yogurts, cottage cheese are the first two that comes into mind. A milk source like Fairlife, they have a pretty 
good filter process that cuts down on carbs, sugar, and keeps the protein up if you're looking for a milk. Cheeses, we're going low or no fat cheeses would be ideal. Certainly they don't taste as well as the whole milk or whole cheese. And, and maybe in certain circumstances you could use whole milk. Uh, the holiday season's upon us here in what, uh, eight weeks or so, eggnog. My wife loves making homemade eggnog and we use whole milk. That's a special occasion for a special recipe to get a certain taste. My job is to not drink too much of it. It tastes really good, so I always grab the smallest cup I can find and go from there. Uh, things that we are staying away from would be like saturated fats, butter, lard, palm oils, trans fats, hydrogenated oils. We're, we're not seeing a lot of those show up in the marketplace as much as we did, say, 10 years ago because of uh, manufacturing practices and all that. But what we do want to include are your mono and polyunsaturated fats, olive oil, canola, peanut oils, sunflower, corn, soybean. So those have some better, healthier fats for you as a human. Most importantly here, you always have to leverage portion size. You can't overdo it. A healthy fat is great, but too much fat is too many calories. One tablespoon of oil across the board, whether it is olive oil or avocado or whatever other oil, still 120 calories. A tab of butter is about 100. That stuff adds up pretty quick. And that would be something I would call a calorie multiplier in the situation of this, uh, of all this. Um, next up is use lots of added salt, sugars, caloric sweeteners. We certainly want to reduce those. Those add a lot of calories or sodium can challenge your blood pressure and such. Very important to navigate and manage that. Right, we're moving on. <clears throat> Uh, next up, how do you do, what do we do here? Low fat cooking methods. We're, we certainly don't want to fry our food in oil or you, you, that doesn't do, or even boiling vegetables can leak out the minerals and vegetables if you over boil them. But boiling can be a good way to get the, the vegetables edible. So grilling, then baking, air frying, doing a little, sometimes using just a spray oil, like Pam spray on top of stuff can really help give you that oil like cook, bake without the extra calories. That's really important. The microwave, if you are a ninja at it, then you can definitely use this for certain things. There are hacks on how to use the microwave. I had a client in Hawaii once, he was in the military and they only had access to the microwave as a cooking equipment and they had a charcoal grill. Well, it was a lot of work to get the charcoal grill going and that would be a singular meal or maybe two meals. So he didn't have a lot of fridge space. We used the microwave quite a bit. He, within a week, he said, he said, Brian, I had the fluffiest eggs that I think I've ever made in the microwave because he learned how to create those. It's just a skill set. Using any type of cooking is just a matter of understanding how you do it to be able to provide a very delicious meal or tasty amount of food. Um, so there in chicken, I'll reheat chicken in, in the microwave. If you just put it on a plate out and it's naked, cold self in the microwave and just push play, that will heat it up and turn into a nice rubbery piece of something. Not the most appetizing. Well, the hack to doing that, and I fig I found this out in 90 seconds of a YouTube video because I went and looked, how do I do this so that I can have tastier, juicier chicken breast that's reheated, but also I can share this with other, other people when we're talking about it. You put it in a, uh, a lid, a a container with a lid on it with it vented so you want one part of the lid undone you put a little bit of water in it you do 45 seconds on one side flip it over for 45 seconds on another voila you have a warm juicy chicken breast in the microwave reheated 
makes it very delicious then all of a sudden. Uh, air Water sautéing, something else. So instead of pouring oil into a pan, which could give you a couple hundred calories if you're not paying attention, we pour water in. And you turn the pan on and it water sautés. Just like cooking in oil with olive oil in the pan, you just put water in. When the water evaporates, because that's what it does, you can either be done or you, if you're not done cooking, you add more water to it. And then voila, you have some more preparation happening there and making it more enjoyable for this process. Certainly, we want to avoid adding salts. There's a lot of low to no sodium type uh, seasonings and flavorings out there. You just have to be conscious, uh, especially with it comes to blood pressure and such, having the general recommendation is 2,000 milligrams in a day. We just want to be careful. Whether it's pink salt, Himalayan salt, rock salt, or whatever other salt, it's still sodium at its basic, and the human body only generally does well tolerating a certain amount. So there's lots of herbs, spices, uh, the examples here, uh, things like I would pick out pepper, garlic, I love ginger, uh, I do enjoy basil and oregano. I don't use those as much for whatever reason. I will use everything but the bagel seasoning, uh, tagine, red pepper flakes are some that come to mind. And I'm also using a large amount of added sugars. So, of course, regular white sugar, but even honey. I'm not going to use honey because... I'm going to use a portion controlled amount of honey because it does have a lot of calories in a little bit. Those honey packets are easily 100 calories that you, you could eat and can get you a lot more sugar than you need. Um, so other sauces, some soy sauce or fish sauce or doing a hot sauce can have a lot more sodium in it if you're not paying attention. So you could either, one thing that I'll do and suggest, get hotter hot sauce and dilute it a little bit. And then all of a sudden you dilute the sodium, but it still gives you that heat that you're looking for. That could be an option to make it work a little better for you. Stock cubes or something else, just be conscious of with that. All right, so how do we swap here this is for baking healthy swaps the examples are baked goods cookies muffins brownies pancakes smoothies could be waffles and breads like a banana bread or something all of these can be healthy as long as they're portion controlled and put into a balanced diet of course now here's some swaps you can take a screenshot or a picture with your phone a sugar to applesauce is a one-to-one -one ratio. Sour cream or oil to Greek yogurt. There are plenty of high-protein, low-carb Greek yogurts that actually taste good. One of my favorite is Too Good. Actually, I just ate it a little bit ago. I got rid of the container uh, just right before I got on here. But it has 12 grams of protein and 2 to 3 grams of carbs, which is phenomenal. And you mix that in. But if you just get a plain kind or a vanilla, you can mix it into something to make it taste similar to sour cream, but spare yourself tons of fat. That's a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, white flour for black beans and brownies, that'd be a one-to-one. -one. Butter, oil, and uh, for mashed bananas and say pancakes. There's so many different types of pancake recipes out there. And people are, say, what about those protein pancakes? Well, the Kodiak cakes are similar. When you look at what is in them and you look at the nutrition label, you see they just have a little bit more protein, not even exponentially a lot more, but seven grams more than traditional, um, say the, the oatmeal brand is, there's about seven more grams of protein in the Kodiak oatmeal over the, the regular old fashioned oatmeal. That's good to know because at the time that I took the screenshot, a silo of oatmeal was six cents per ounce. A, a container of the Kodiak cake oatmeal was 45 cents per ounce. So six cents per ounce versus 45 for seven more grams of protein per serving. It's not worth it. 
you could do a lot of alternatives to get a lot more protein in it at far cheaper the cost. So things to think about, just the sheer cost of some of these food products that they have out there are just more convenient driven. So we'll go through the pea, powdered peanut butter, fantastic way to create a lot more peanut butter taste in what you are eating. Peanut butter is primarily fat. Approximately 72% of the calories are coming from fat. Some people are like, oh, it doesn't have protein in it. Yes, it has a little bit of protein. There's actually any serving size of peanut butter, which is two tablespoons, has roughly 190 calories and 16 grams of fat. Well, there's eight grams of protein in one and eight grams of carbs. So eight times four is 32 calories of protein out of um out of two uh almost 200 it's not a good mix up there all right so powdered peanut butter what they do is they press the oil out of the peanuts itself and then they blend it up then and dry it out and you have powdered peanut butter and so again, a tablespoon of regular peanut butter can be 100. A tablespoon of powdered peanut butter is going to be more closer to 20 or so. Significant savings while still getting some of that peanut butter taste. Uh, there's some other ones there. Uh, a healthy option would be uh, butter for avocado. That could be a good swap that you could have in certain foods or in uh, other recipes and such. So swap sugar out for cinnamon and cloves and nutmeg. Those are some of my favorites. Vanilla tastes amazing. And other extracts like the almond extract. What we do is if we're swapping out sugar for these things, we can create a lot of different flavorings and then not just be that, say, white glucose, yeah, the white glucose sugary hit that you would take on your tongue when you ate it. Swapping salt out, so if you're used to using salt, again, we want to reduce it, maybe take the salt shaker off of the table, put things like peppers, herbs, spices, lemon juice, vinegar. I'm not a big vinegar fan. That's one of the few that and olives just don't like for whatever reason. Olive oil is fine, but olives is not a fan. Out of the Those are like two of the few things that I won't consume, but... I wouldn't pick that one, but garlic powder, I definitely would. And then seasoned blends that have no sodium in them, specifically on the front, you would look and you could double check on the label itself, say sodium zero. All right, so we have some other swaps here. French fries for sweet potato fries. Now, even better, what we're going to do is we're going to slice and dice sweet potato fries or even regular potatoes and Put them in the oven or the air fryer yourself. You don't have to oil it. You can just put them in. They will crisp up just like a french fry would, roasted. And then you have fries on your own. And now you basically just have a potato in the oven. And that's incredibly healthier than, say, McDonald's or another fast food joint that has tons and tons of sodium poured all over it, too. Chips for kale chips. Now, if you look at a label, one chip is about 10 calories. Initially seems pretty harmless, but who eats one chip or even five? All of a sudden you have 20 and you have 200 calories of just chips. Or even think of the small snack size bags are approximately 200, uh, about 150 calories. Those don't last very long and usually want another one. So they can definitely trip you up. Now, the other thing with chips is that once you add a dip on them, then all of a sudden we're multiplying calories. Dips, outside of, say, salsa, that's there's 30 calories in one cup of salsa, but everything else you put on chips, cheese, queso, hummus, and such can be calorie multipliers if you're scooping that. So then all of a sudden, any chip with a scoop of something could be upwards of 40 calories, 50 calories per one chip. You've had five chips, you have 200 plus calories, and you haven't even really started eating anything. That's not wise. Now, kale chips in and of itself with minimal amount of oil are basically no calories, and you can eat a lot of those and still get that crunch that you want. Minimal salt or do throw in some of those other 
replacements for salt that we said in the last slide would be a really good idea to give that a really enjoyable taste. Uh, mashed potatoes for cow flour. Cow flour only has 30 calories per cup. Potato has about 125 calories per cup. Therefore, obviously, you could have multiple amounts of mashed cow flour. They also have rice cow flour for an additional swap that could be on in this slide as well. Regular, um, regular rice or rice cow flour, again, there's almost 200 calories in a cup of rice. And a couple of cow flowers, rice would be around 25, 30 calories. So you could have lots of cow flour rice is an alternative. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on the last slide, but having avocado or Greek yogurt as a replacement for mayo. I've even used uh, cottage cheese as a replacement for mayo in my tuna salad. So I'm amping up my protein in there and it really blends well. As soon as I add some garlic and some other hot sauce and whatever else into it, it tastes in what I, I do relish, mu mustard, I'll do the cottage cheese and I'll do maybe something else, garlic. And I get that exact tuna salad sandwich type feel and taste without using mayo. And it works out pretty well to add protein to my dish instead of fat. Bread crumbs, we look at chopped nuts or rolled oats, different ways to do that. Again, if you're just having one slice of bread or you can even do lower slices, lower calorie slices of bread, that could work out really well. Just to, if you do chopped nuts, you just want to be careful of the total caloric intake on those. But those are some good ideas. So other swaps here, we have pasta, spaghetti squash, zoodles. If you see two cups of spaghetti squash, 84 calories two cups of pasta, 442 calories. We go from 20 carbs to 86 carbs, significant difference. Now you might be saying, Brian, um, that's not pasta. Like I would agree with you, but maybe you could do a 50-50, 50% 50 50 spaghetti squash, 50% pasta. All of a sudden you have a happy blend of getting some vegetables into the mix while getting a lot more volume on your plate of quote pasta like foods and pasta itself, and then enjoy that with a lean protein meat sauce. Could be really, and some added tomatoes, could be enjoyable. Uh, ice cream, there's a lot of mock ice creams online, on YouTube, and looking for some different ones. So there's some recipes, a chocolate banana ice cream. Bananas end up getting used a lot in ice cream. Uh, alternatives and such or protein powders can get added in there a lot too to bump up the actual protein but when you blend it and mix it it can taste pretty darn good and be a solid substitute rather than ice cream ice cream being a spoonful could easily be 50 plus calories depending on what you get a hagen dazs or ben and jerry's could be a thousand calories in a pint that's a lot of calories so all right, so we look for uh, the peanut butters uh, recipes, just adding lower amounts of peanut butter into it. All right, so oils, healthy oils, olive oil, canola, peanuts, so all those there are good healthy ones to use. The ones, the, the ways that we want to think about this is, you know, use oils rather than solid fats. So lard, as an example, or butter, uh, increase you, your use of foods naturally containing it. Oils, so healthier fats, nuts, olives, avocados. Inside my yogurt, I had broken up pecans, so I got some healthy fats just a little bit ago. We do want a certain amount of fats in the diet. It's important to be able to enjoy a certain amount, but we do want to limit it. There are nine calories in a gram of fat and four calories in a gram of protein and carbs. So it is important to pay attention to how much fat intake you're taking in a day so you don't get too many calories. Okay. So, and the last one says just really avoid different oils that have low, uh, avoid saturated fats or hydrogenated oils. Now, how do we actually renovate the recipe itself? Oh, here we go. Here's lasagna as an example. The original 
goes to 850 calories, 25 grams of saturated fat, 2,830 milligrams of sodium. The modified version significantly reduces that into the portion of how much that makes. So 400 calories, 7 grams of fat, 800 milligrams is sort of much better. And so the, the biggest difference is reducing the oils, reducing the fattier meat to an extra lean ground meat, lowering the milk from a full fat to a low fat, from butter to margarine, you certainly would reduce the portion from salt to other seasoning spices, uh, nutmeg, basil, oregano, the, the regular cheese to finely grated cheese. I would even suggest throwing in a low-fat ricotta or low-fat cottage cheese would blend very well. Then you could add other things, uh, zucchini noodles, you could add spaghetti squash, you could do carrots, you can blend up lentils into the mix to get it to be a lot healthier. There's lots of options on how to do that. All right, next up, we have blueberry muffins. So we look white flour for whole wheat or rolled oats. We've got, you know, less salt, egg whites over eggs to cut out some of the fat calories there. Egg whites have just protein in them, so it's a very easy option. Oil and butter for Greek yogurt could be a really good easy add. Again, lots of protein, basically no fat in some Greek yogurts. Uh, honey and vanilla over white sugar, just a super healthier option for you with a lot more vitamins and micronutrients like minerals than whole, whole wheat and rolled oats. Cuts calories down from 380 to 120 ish per the serving size of what would be in one. That's a big difference. Think of the the regular muffins that you get at, say, a warehouse place such as Sam's Club or Costco. Those are 400 calorie muffins. They're very tasty, but they're very calorie dense. Mac and cheese, we're looking for here, looking at 850 calories, 480 total grams of four, 48 grams of fat and the other alternative being a lot less 268 calories with six grams of fat that's uh, quite a shift so a subtle shifts from white to wheat pastas again the bigger shift in in the pasta is how much you're actually using in it so you could also add in the zoodles or spaghetti squash in that mix too or you put some pasta in and you mix in more protein and vegetables in there. So a chicken, broccoli, mac and cheese could be a really good way to fill up the bowl or your plate with the protein and vegetables without adding more starch. We'll do mac and cheese in my house. Sometimes I'll make the cheese sauce with cottage cheese and a little bit of cheddar, but that ends up being the base. So it's adding a lot of protein and not a lot of calories and fat. My kids have yet to figure it out. I have four kids and especially my third one, Maxwell, he would call me out on it in an instant <laughs> if I didn't make it uh, taste good. So it's important that I do a good job on that. We have, again, just lower fat dairies and no butters. As I said, adding in something else into the mac and cheese cuts down on the impact of the overall amount of calories going into a portion so dining out hacks and how to change them. Tip number one, read the menu like an ingredient list to choose the healthiest options. We're looking at things that don't say crispy or fried or french fries or um, what else? Uh, different breadings, different sauces uh, in general. We're picking protein and vegetables first and then a little bit of starch always works pretty well. I regularly get a lot of menus to from places that people are going to eat at. So I will be offering a lot of suggestions on how to make sure that they pick healthy choices that are in line with what their goals are. Split a meal with a friend. That's an excellent or get them one portion size instead of a regular entree. You'll save some money. I'll split. Sometimes my wife and I will go out for lunch. I'd much rather just split an entree than to 
uh, eat one myself. Oftentimes, I'm going out to eat for the entertainment relationship value, not to stuff my face with a bunch of calories that are going to then cause me to have to be extra paying attention to the types of food that I have to eat the rest of the day to keep my calories in check. Not ideal and a lot more harder work that I'm trying to avoid as much as possible. Eating slowly and mindfully and stop when you're comfortably full, right? Some really good strategies here are you don't need to do the clean plate club. You can always take food home with you. Maybe you just eat 50% of what's on the plate and you always pack up the rest, then saving it for another meal, eating all the protein, all the vegetables, a little bit of starch and saving it for later, drinking a whole glass of water before you even eat anything would be a great strategy to take into the restaurant so that you enjoy yourself. And you, when you get to the meal and it actually comes about 15, 20 minutes after ordering, that's that time frame of which you start to feel full. That's a really good time to then not, uh, not overdo it and um, not overeat because you're full from the water and the liquid. Soft fried for grilled or blackened options, get extra vegetables. I'm a big fan of ordering protein double vegetables, salad and, and vegetables or double vegetables on the plate. I think that makes a lot of sense to keep calories in check. Uh, you will go, any restaurant's gonna serve you a thousand plus calories on a plate. They want the food to taste good and be hearty and you leave there really excited. But we literally just don't need it to be that heavy. So, Doing this tip, this option here, will reduce three, four, five hundred calories straight out the gate and help you stay in caloric alignment. Minimize dishes that have creamy sauces, coconut-based curries, deep-fried foods, pastry-based foods. Those are screaming higher calories from the get-go. And most importantly, again, Having one or two bites might be the level of satisfaction that you need to feel really good about that and not overdo it. Never, ever go hungry. <laughs> of course, same thing with grocery shopping. You don't want to go there and and just buy things that you don't need or don't want or you get distracted by what the daily special is. That's not helpful for you to making progress for yourself. Okay, you don't want to do that. So let me think if there's any other really good strategies. The most important thing is to show up planned ahead of time when you're going out to eat or even going to a restaurant or going to a friend's house or an event, say Sunday football games, knowing what's on the menu to make better choices is really going to make it work really well. So what questions do any of you guys have from what we presented so far? I'd love to see them in the chat. What was some of the takeaways of it? Um, oh, here's one. Someone says that you know, getting the the the, the high protein Greek yogurt really is a, a good option. I didn't think about that. And when it came to, to she loves her. Her her burritos with sour cream, and so she's going to give that a whirl this week. That'll be great. What else do we have? Others? Other questions? Um, yeah, so one thing about, again, assessing the menus on uh, that don't have calories on them, what we're going to look at is other places that do have. So say you're going to an Italian joint, that has a pasta plate okay there's no calories on it smaller restaurants don't do that but larger chains do so we could reference Olive Garden in a sense to help you better understand how many calories are generally just going to be in it and with that that really helps you at least frame what this meal this choice is going to do for you uh do you have a low calorie diet uh, online to try. I, I spent a fair amount of time uh, diet plan to try. 
so I, I hang my hat as a, a nutritionist, a health coach, a life coach, and, and all sorts of different things. My job is to help you understand the basics of what nutrition is, what healthy living is, and, and good choices around, around say, getting an adequate amount of movement, making good food choices, and practicing portion control. You could Google low calorie diet. You're going to get, especially if you're a female, you're going to get something around, you know, 1200 calories. That's a, the international amount of calories that most women are always told to eat to lose weight. You can lose weight there. My goal is to get you to eat as many calories as you can to lose weight. So there's a structure around how you want to build meals around how you want to think about in the times of the day that you eat, how you plan ahead and make decisions and have better systems around this. So it's not a plan. I don't do plans. I do coaching to help you understand where the gaps are so that you can make better choices every single day and not get stuck. Oh, it's Friday, made a bad decision. I'm just going to start my diet on Monday. That's not ideal. Good job. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday are off track and then and just kind of in that don't care type energy. Then you start on Monday and you start going again and then Thursday comes and something breaks because you're trying to follow this plan. The most important plan that you can have is making sure that it is sustainable, <laughs> that you have an approach that works for you. I've worked with vegans, vegetarians, omnivores, carnivores, all in between, but the general principles of what works best for humans to manage their weight are pretty basic. There's a certain amount of calories you need to eat, a certain amount of movements you need to do, and so that's it. Uh, there are some great apps that help you watch carbs and fats. Yes, uh, I will. With some clients, I do some tracking in calories and macros of protein, carbs, fats, and I help teach people how to do that and understand what is actually in the food that they're eating so they make better cho choices and portions of that. Other people don't. We just look at the structure of having protein, some vegetables, a little bit of fruit, and some starch in the day and how that works to also even have a better plan and prep. So you could use a MyFitnessPal or lose it to help you do that. They'll give you a, a general amount of calories for you to track when you sign up and based on your goals. To be honest, I never pay attention to them. <laughs> Whenever I'm working with someone, I'm looking to one, assess where they're at right now, having say a diet audit, and then start working on building a better plan of approach around that. I, I referenced earlier in the the webinar here, have a type two, type one diabetic, her blood sugars were 146 to 156 on average, 30 days prior, we just started up on Wednesday, or third Tuesday, something like that. She's averaging 109 now. So she's down 40 plus points of her blood sugar levels and they're more consistently throughout the day and she has to worry less about using insulin because we have better structure and she understands what she's doing already a couple days in. So there's a lot of options out there. Hopefully that answered your question. Uh, you can do a low calorie diet plan. Just you can Google that, but that's, that's um, all the things that we talked about in our conversation today would be things that I would and uh, be incorporating into your everyday life with all the things and the moving parts that you got from work to family to you know, I have four kids. Uh, there's always something going on in my house with with food and different situations and even the timing. It's a lot of after school activities and such. So um, so hopefully that answers your question. Other questions? That was great. Anything else? Here we go, the thing you've been waiting on, <laughs> the code, verification code. So 85741, keep it to yourself. Make sure that uh, you are, uh, the people that showed up are getting their credit here. So you go into the app, into your user account, dashboard, special activity, and enter in this verification code, 85741. Excellent. So one more time, it's 85741. So 
So I want to thank you for your time today. Hopefully you're thinking a little bit differently around how you are renovating your own recipes. There's the website, the, or the, the email there that you can uh, email us at to help you better understand or any questions you have as well.